how's it going YouTube? So right here you see I am trying to do a Maven and I decided to see how good this build will be on a budget and I decided to use a white claw and I took off my belt and all my flasks just to simulate probably what I don't know like what the budget would be like in terms of gear I could have tried it on a 2 link or 3 link or 4 link but this is pretty much what I decided to do because I kind of got bored I tried to do a lot of bossing today with Uber Elder but buying sets was extremely painful and I just wanted to try out because I was trying to buy some budget gear for the Frostblaze guy but it was kind of hard to actually purchase everything but you can see the damage is obviously going to be lower but it is kind of nice how good the damage is with a white claw and without a belt and having the old shaper effect of eternity shroud so I was actually decently surprised now yeah well if you do that you're probably going to die I think that's actually my only death of the fight though so definitely taking off the belt does lower my defenses a little bit but you can see you don't even need to use touch of anguish you could literally find a shaped white claw on the ground and it is more than enough to do the fight now does this mean that you should be using a white claw probably not so today i did make some upgrades to my build on frostblade and i do think it's actually a lot better you can see here i actually already have 5.7k life even without using a belt so i was actually able to get my life up to like 6k ish and i was able to do that by changing up the tree a little bit and it also allowed me to get some more damage i decided to drop numbing elixir so i'm excited to share that and then next i'm going to go over a profile for the highest damage spectral shield throw i don't know how much you guys like the top dps profiles but it is nice to see what is actually achievable and how they actually achieve it at least on poe ninja so let's get straight into the gear overview. Here you can see I still have the remnants of this experiment. But let me put on my real gear again. I actually have not bought any new gear. So I'm just going to focus on the actual changes of the build. And let's see. So the big change here is I have 6091 HP now, right? So before up here on the tree, I had these nodes. One, two, three, three, four, five, six. I was spending six points to get some multi and claw nodes and it just turned out that it wasn't that point efficient so what i ended up doing was i had two uh numbing elixir clusters here before and i dropped both of them i decided that curse immune is honestly whatever if i get cursed i get cursed i just won't run like vulnerability maps and in terms of ailment immunity i was able to fix it by taking these three nodes here so these three nodes gives you one percent max res which is really invaluable in terms of your, your character's defense and then it also gives you 50% avoid elemental ailments. You can take this node here for chill and freeze. So overall you have 50% here. You have 20% here from these nodes. And then you can also get like 25% to 35% on your boots. And then lastly you can get 20% on your belt from elusive. 20% uh, of chance to avoid elemental ailments while you have elusive. And then you can also get 10% on the implicits for corruptions like this. So you can get one with chance to avoid being shocked. Another one with chance to avoid being chilled or frozen. And so on and so forth. These pair of boots do have cannot be frozen on them. So overall the damage on POB actually went up by a significant margin. And then I was also able to get a lot tankier by getting a lot more HP. And I was also able to get more move speed. Because I was able to use pressure points quick getaway with uh, move speed that you get while well, if you've dealt a crit critical strike recently and i also got wind dancer that i was able to pick up because i ended up pathing down this way to get these ailment immune life nodes so overall i dropped a little bit of damage from these nodes up here but i was able to offset it by dropping the curse immune um what's it called curse immune and ailment immune fl flask clusters and replace it with these clusters and another underrated benefit is you do get one of your flash slots back because you no longer need to use Divination Distillate or a small life flash. So you're able to use Aziri's Promise. And one of the biggest upsides is that you no longer have conditional ailment immunity. Because a lot of people play, they don't have, they don't always remember to always press their life flash, right? Even though the life flash pretty much has 100% uptime. So with this, you can see we have. 100% chance to avoid shock, 100% chance to avoid freeze, and then this we can get to 100% if we take this node right here. And you could technically get ignite to 100% if you take this node, but ignite is honestly not that big of a deal. 
So the other change I ended up making was also dividing my lethal pride a little bit. So now I don't need fire res anymore. I'm not really sure where I got so much fire res from. I think I got it from... I'm not too sure. I think I just... Oh, you get some extra resist from crystal skin. You get 5% here and 5% here. So you get 10% all res extra, which is kind of nice because resists are kind of an issue with this build. So what that means is I only needed to get Intimidate on my on one of these nodes. So I was able to drop this here because this wasn't too efficient. And it does take a lot of Divines to Divine the Lethal Pride to get Intimidate on hit. So I was able to finally get Intimidate on hit right here on Winter Spirit. And here you get 5% of physical damage from hits taken as fire damage. And this is very, very important since as a build with no actual armor. So you can see here we actually have no armor at all. We have no armor. Okay, so we don't have any armor besides for our spike glove. So we have 4% armor. So any of these chance to take physical damage as an elemental ailment is elemental damage is extremely important. So I have 15% of physical damage from hits taken as fire damage. And then we also have an extra bonus of 10% reduced extra damage from critical strikes. So that's the nice part about dividing a lethal pride is that it's actually not really good dividing the lethal pride. Intimidate is a super low chance and the chances you get these nodes all being good is pretty low because someone on my stream actually divined 60 divines into a lethal pride and didn't get anything good. So right now this variation of a build is definitely the strongest it's ever been. 6.1k life is pretty good. You're not really going to die to anything unless you're doing like 100% deli maps or tropical island deli and not paying attention. Sad part is I actually got up to 40% HP but then I decided to do some dumb things and do more tropical island deli. Because I guess I'm just addicted to them and I ended up dying to some explosion. So there does tend to be a conversation about how good Petrified Blood is. And that's something I might try dropping uh, using a real life shield. And then you can get this HP pull up to 6.3k. You do lose the Overleech. But I'm not sure how good it is. So you do lose Precision. I mean you can't really lose Precision. So maybe the Prism Guardian is a good option. I do think that Overleech is invaluable, especially for bossing. But now I'm going to talk about Spectral Shield Throw and the number one profile for damage because it's actually kind of crazy how high it is. And it is an Eternity Shroud build, of course. So let's see what we have here. So you think we have better skill diversity. It doesn't really seem so. Spectral Shield Throw is as popular as ever and overwhelmingly so. So I saw this profile, 123 mil. I thought it was only at like 70 mil before. So I always wonder, how do you actually get so much damage out of a profile? And usually the answer is, is that it doesn't really take that much more to get from like 70 to 100 mil. It's usually only like one or two more multipliers and then you get all the way up there. But let's see what he has going on. Immediately I see it's an Eternity Shroud build, so it's pretty good. So maybe I can learn some things. So number one thing, you can't use Secrets of Suffering if you're trying to get high pop DPS or PoE Ninja DPS because it doesn't account for brittle and scorch effects. So Spectral Shield Throw, they use this dagger and you can see here this is a Gain Fizz, it's extra cold, Gain Fizz is extra lightning, Gain 8% of elemental damage is extra chaos damage. So that mod right there, Gain's elemental is extra chaos damage is extremely good because it acts as part of an Eternity Shroud. So this is pretty much having like one and a half items worth of Eternity Shroud from the gain 8% of elemental damage, extra chaos damage. And then he also has 30% of Fizz converted to cold and 40% multi while a rare or unique enemy is nearby and trigger. And then trigger, he has Ice Golem, Hydra Spear, and Life Tap. It's actually kind of weird he has Life Tap linked to this, but yeah. So basically, this dagger is pretty much a mirror tier dagger with stats good in every single slot. And the main thing is he was able to get 30% of Fizz converted to cold damage. Now this is important because he's able to use this to get full conversion. He gets 30% from the dagger and I'm assuming like 40% from here and then he gets 40% from the tree. So this opens up actually the glove slot which we have Asenav's Gentle Touch. And this is actually pretty huge. This is actually kind of surprising because these pair of gloves are probably not the highest DPS boosting pair of gloves you could possibly have on Spectral Shield Throw. 
You can definitely get more of maybe a Culling Pair or Plus One Frenzy or something like that. Or even a Hands of the High Templar. So this guy is not actually like Tooltip warring it to the max. But these Asinaths are Shaper. And they also have 9% increased attack speed and plus 1 frenzy. Now Hands of the High Templar probably would not work because you can't get them as Shaper gloves. So maybe these gloves are actually insane. But I do think you could probably craft a better rare pair of gloves with Shaper and Warlords or something like that. Now Pyre is pretty much used so you can convert everything. So in as usual, Eternity Shroud, name of the game is to convert all your damage. So between Anomalous, Cold to Fire, and this ring, he's able to convert all of the Cold to Fire. So he's able to convert all his Fizz damage to Cold damage, then all of the Cold damage to Fire damage. And at every single point of the chain, it benefits him to get that amount of damage because it gets double dips from Eternity Shroud. So if all the Cold damage gets taken as extra Chaos damage before the conversion, and then all the Fire damage gets taken as extra Chaos damage after the conversion, so it's actually just insane. Now, main thing you should notice from this Eternity Shroud is its level, is its corruption. It's plus one, plus two. What this means is that this allows the Spectral Shield Throw to get to level, I think, 25 with the plus one dex. So that's why he has plus one dex and plus three on the Eternity Shroud. So at level 25, I think the Flat Fizz from this skill goes up. It's like a break point or something. So just the 6 to 8 added physical damage per 15 armor evasion rating. I think that actually goes up. So let's check it out. PoE DB Spectral Shield Throw. Because it's always important to know like the breakpoints of the skills, right? So you can see 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. It goes to 7 to 9. So maybe 24 is the breakpoint. So that's why it's important to get it. So you can see 6 to 8 to 7 to 9. And that's the main difference of what's it called? Reaching level 24. So he's actually able to do it without the amulet, but the amulet just happens to be actually just crazy. He also uses Panopticon. And if you're able to put down totems, Panopticon will always be the best DPS anointment. Now this ring here is no life on it, but non-channeling and just a lot of multi. So multi is probably usually the best thing you can get on the ring, especially with wed. Increased element, elemental damage with attacks. So overall his jewelry is pretty good. Now here you have the blizzard crown and then fires five additional shards is what everyone always uses. And this helmet is pretty interesting. It's not really full damage. He does, he awaken orb to get it a elevated shaped nearby enemies take 9% increased elemental damage. And then he also did elevated fire. And the nice part about converting all your damage to fire is that you can build penetration for it and have it be very effective. So that's why if you're not using Secrets of Suffering, this is actually a huge benefit, right? Because if I could convert all my damage on my Frostblaze guy to fire, I could do the same thing and use a helmet like this and actually do a lot more damage. So in the very end, there is an argument to be made that Secrets of Suffering is probably not better than using regular conversion purely because you can get so much pen so easily. And if you have good enough gear to get crit capped, then it's not really a problem, right? So Spectral Shield Throw uses the shield to get the damage. So the way that Spectral Shield Throw scales and why it's so crazy now is because of this jewel that gives you an insane amount of multi because of the energy shield and then also a lot of crit chance. So your base crit is actually really high on the skill now. When it before it used to be only 5%. And that's probably why how he's able to get crit capped without really investing too much into crit. So this shield main thing for damage is of course the attack speed and cast speed and the chance to deal double damage. And now this pair of boots is actually pretty insane. He has elevated ailments and then elevated tailwind. So this is the type of boots that I would be making on my guy. And then he has strength as the suffix and then life and then he actually crafted on life again. So this person's gear actually has a surprising amount of life on some pieces. So his boots have like 100 life. His helmet has 123 life. And his amulet doesn't have any life or ring. But belt, Stygian belt. This is why you don't use a head hunter or shaped head hunter. Especially if you want a tooltip warrior, your POE ninja profile. Never use a shaped head hunter. It's because look at the amount of damage you can get on the belt. This is just absolutely absurd, right? 83%. So it's like almost 
increased damage between the elemental and projectile attack damage, along with 15% attack speed with the abyss socket, and he crafts on strength and int. Not really sure why, probably needs the int for something because he has 149 int. So what does he actually need the int for? 129 int here. I'm actually not too sure why he needs the intelligence because if you look through all his gear, he actually doesn't really need it at all besides for the eternity shroud. So flasks, this is pretty unrealistic flask. If you want to have a lot of damage, pretty much just use the orb to get increased effect on every single unique flask. Vessel of Vinktar is probably not something that people do, but this is pretty much purely for PoE Ninja, this flask setup. I could not imagine a world where you wouldn't want to use a Quicksilver flask, but he does have shield charge as his movement skill, so that's something. So large clusters, medium clusters, so pressure points quick getaway, so this is why I use them. So pressure points quick getaway is just double damage and then crit chance. So this is actually how you probably get crit capped pretty easily is by using these medium clusters because they actually give you a lot of crit chance. So let's see, this guy's jewels are not as good as I thought they would be. So this guy has life attack speed double res, life attack speed double res. So this person's profile, surprisingly, is not even tooltip warrior to the max, right? If you were trying to get as much tooltip as possible, you probably use jewels with all damage mods, right? And not life and resist. But this person probably tries to play the build. And this is a pretty nice watcher's eye. But basically, his profile could have a lot more damage if you wanted to. And anytime you use a Lethal Pride on PoE Ninja, you're screwed because PoE Ninja has no idea what the Lethal Pride actually is. So when you import the profile over, not really cheating by that much because he only has 124 points. Unlike some of the profiles we saw of 139 points. So his crit chance is 100%. So what are these ones that he uses? Attack skills deal 30% increased damage while holding a shield, 5% move speed. And then this is Field of Fight, Martial Prowess. So basically, lots of crit chance, lots of double damage on everything, lots of multi, 100% crit chance, and then some pen. This is a pretty good profile, right? He's actually not like a glass cannon completely. He has 3.5k life. And yeah, he just took a lot of damage nodes, honestly. And that's the reason why his life is so low. You look at his total percent life from the tree, it's 79%. When you compare that to a hardcore build, hardcore build will probably have like 200% life. So let's look at the gem links. So the gem links a lot of times are what makes the profile do so much damage, right? And I'll show you what, how to do it in PoE Ninja or POB. So these are the best links, of course. Shield throw, wed, inspiration, vicious projectiles. Elemental focus is kind of a meme, but... If you don't really care about the fire ailment, I guess it doesn't really matter. So Stormbrand is being used to proc combustion and give him power charges. And combustion gives him negative 10% to fire resist. So this is the thing I'm talking about, like how efficient it is if you can convert all your damage to a specific element. Now his auras are hatred, herald of purity, and precision. Nothing strange there. Sniper's mark, blood rage, enhance, phantasmal, ancestral protector. Where's the Ancestral Warchief totem though? I guess he just has Ancestral Protector. Oh yeah, Warchief probably doesn't work with Spectral Shield Throw. But basically, you can see some of this stuff is kind of like, is he really casting Sniper's Mark on every single boss manually? And you can see here how fast like some of the damage will go down once you uncheck some of these things. And a Hydra Spear. So like if you're actually doing a boss, are you really going to be casting Hydra Spear and then Sniper's Mark and then Stormbrand? Like a lot of times you probably just do more damage if you just immediately start special shield throwing. So let's see how much of a difference more multipliers makes in general. So you take off Sniper's Mark, probably one of the biggest damage increases you can get. 28% gone, right? This is literally an insane curse. It's like 40% increased damage taken. And then you have to look at Ancestral Protector, probably not dropping that totem down all the time. Stormbrand, probably not using this all the time. Combustion. The combustion is actually not that big of a damage increase, actually. And a Hydra Spear for... I don't even know why you use Hydra Spear because... Oh, it chains back and forth between the Hydra Spear for Spectral Shield Throw. But you can see, mainly, so much of the damage is Sniper's Mark. If you want damage, 39% increase in Sniper's Mark. And Totem's Ancestral Protector with Panopticon. So that's how you actually get 
insane PoE ninja damage is use the totems, use Panopticon, get the effect of the totems, it's overpowered, and use Sniper's Mark as a curse and link it to Enhance because it's another more multiplier. But I hope that helped everyone understand how these people get so much damage. In the end, it's honestly just some flask adjustments and a few marks here and there, some totems here and there, and it really shoots the thing up through the roof. So you can see how much you turn off the flasks, and then you turn off Sniper's Mark, Ancestral Protector, which is linked to Enhance. And you can see the damage goes all the way down to 24 million. It's actually just crazy how this game works with more multipliers. Which is part of the reason why it's so hard to actually nerf builds. Because if you nerf the high end of builds, this just means the low end of builds becomes absolutely terrible. And that's what ruins build diversity. find the right words and there's no way this is real life there's no telling you're the right girl so i can only say that it feels right it feels right it feels right yeah i can only say that it feels right it feels right it feels right yeah i can only say that it feels right This is just a must. Put me in perspective. I'm the deepest in the cut. Everybody tuning in, but this is just for us now. We know I ain't ballin' yet. Hoes wanna holler? Oh no, I don't call them back, girl. Let me see you hold it down. We gon' have a blast. Cause I just wanna know what you gonna do with all of that. I ain't gotta say a word. I know what's up. You can have it all. Watch me rip it off. I'll admit it. You got me feeling hella love. Even when it's going down, know that we gon' live it up. Young shot caller. Always been a baller. Know that you the one. I can feel it in my heart. Yeah, I won't stop charging. We going come harder. I can see you and I way beyond the stars, girl. I can never ever find the right words. And there's no way this is real life. There's no telling you're the right girl. So I can only say that it feels right.
Anyhow, I hope everyone enjoyed some of the bossing footage with the white claw, no belt, no flask. I know I still have pretty good gear on, but it's actually very surprising how much damage you can do with a white claw. Because I didn't really know why it was doing so much. I'm guessing it's just a flat fizz on my rings or blizzard crown. But you can definitely see touch up anguish can easily do everything if a white claw can do everything, right? And even you say, oh, the gear is good, no belt, not all shaped items with a white claw. Build is definitely doable on a budget. I am still trying to do the guide. I'm going to make it pretty good. I'm going to go over all the skill gems and different options. Now, I did realize one thing that I always go on about is how good Summon Skitter Bots is for this build or builds in general to add um, damage. So here you can see you would think that Summon Skitter Bots would do a lot of damage, right? You'd get Divergent Summon Skitter Bots, but you can see here. Summon Skitter Bots only gives you negative 2% damage, and the reason why is because these people use Vessel of Vinktar. And Vessel of Vinktar gives you the shock effect, so you don't actually need to use Skitter Bots. So this is actually a very good cheating flash for PoE Ninja, for everyone wondering. So after this video, I'll probably get rid of my Quicksilver Flask, drop Secrets of Suffering, get a Vessel of Vinktar, and I'll be the number one Frostblades character. No, nah, do that's super cringe, but I'm just going over the ways that people get their damage so high Because it's actually crazy, right? You think, oh, this guy has so much damage In the end, it's only a little swap here and there Maybe enhance a sniper's mark An extra aura for more multiplier And that's how you get the damage so high I hope everyone enjoys me going over all these builds Because every time I see a number so high on PoE Ninja I always wonder, um, is the build actually good? Or is it just fake? But thanks for watching everyone, I hope you find more mirrors and exhausts than I do, and see you next time, bye!